We come at you from the shores of Lake Erie. EA Sports has the coverage of the NFL from First Energy Stadium here in Cleveland, Ohio. This was the scene a few minutes ago. The dog pound in full roar as their Browns emerge from their tunnel. And they're ready to go as they get set to match up. Well, a dangerous return man showing it here with the Indianapolis Colts. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Naeem Hines, his first carry. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight-ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. Now throwing on first down and completing it. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. It's now second and six at the 47-yard line. From the gun, Rivers. He's got Jack Doyle. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Seven yards there and a first down. First down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. A first down throw here for Rivers. Take it in by the tight end, Doyle. And he's got this down to the 35. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. down Rivers almost able to intercept it that's one he would have liked to have held on to on this first drive instead second down they've given up a few first downs on this drive but getting the incompletion there that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide Rivers incomplete on first down here's second and ten throwing again Rivers a good throw here, finding Pascal. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far on the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. Third and short yardage, Rivers. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Here's Hines. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. No gain Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. On second down now. It's Hines, and good downhill running. He's got six yards down to the 13. He was All right, Brad, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. Play number nine now on this pretty long opening drive, but this is third down. 
Working out of the gun, Rivers. And he's wrapped up, taken down, back at the 25. In for the sack, Miles Garrett. Well, it's about how teams are so competitively matched, and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal? That's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. A 42-yard attempt. Blankenship's kick is good. And the Colts hit the scoreboard first. It's 3 0. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, okay, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like whew, we only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Now Donovan Peoples-Jones. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. 23-yard line. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 23. And he'll throw right away. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. Working out of the gun, Mayfield got a man. That's Rashard Higgins, and he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. 11 yards there, first down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. And some room to work, and he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Chewing up big yardage, another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. They run again on first down, Chubb. And he is going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. The tackle made by no gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. Leads to Out on the edge, you love to have cornerbacks like that that can bring him down in the run game. And you're also exposed to everyone. It really becomes a one-on-one -on -one play, doesn't it? You're out there by yourself on the edge. The best ones know how to make the play, and we just saw an example of it right there. This one complete into the hands of Higgins. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Give him 22 there on the third down conversion. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. 
On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And he stopped immediately there. DeForest Buckner in on the tackle. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. From the gun, Mayfield. He's going to go up top for the end zone. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. The Colts' D sticking to their assignments, and that brings up Ford. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs, able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. Now Cody Parkey out to try the field goal. Right hash mark of 42-yard attempt. The kick by Parkey is good, and that will tie us at 3-3. So a return of serve, so to speak, here on the second drive of our game as they respond to that opening field goal with three of their own. I like that. Go little tennis out there. I know you. You like to mix it up I with like sports. They, yeah. they crack a forehand back at him. They get a backhand. What was the serve? It, it, it was a backhand. I and like a that. really good backhand. It's a nice top spin on the a little bit. bit. I bit. love it. Almost a mirror image when you really get down to it. I thought that was pretty good stuff. Possession, each team with a field goal as the kick is away. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. A gain of six there on first. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep. And that now a hit, and Rivers lost the football. There, this is picked up by the Browns. And he'll take this back down inside the 20. Thank goodness for heaters up here. And thank goodness I don't have to carry the football in this game. It's January. It's cold out there. Trying to clutch the football and absorb the hits. Not easily done. Yeah, we saw a product of the elements right there. On third down, Rivers. Left side, Doyle with it. And he'll be stopped at the 27-yard line, well short of the first down marker. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. a punt of 34 yards that time and the Browns will take over first and 10. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense and after the field goal last time we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that. They weren't happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive down with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. At the 43-yard line. 
The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Back to the ground. This time it's Chubb. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Just a couple on the ground there. That's going to bring up third and about six. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater. He just made a great play there. On third down, Mayfield. Forced out to his left. He's got a first down and then some inside the 40. Now that's one they hate. The ball's got to come all the way back. So that's an explosive play, a really explosive play that gets wiped out and they have to start over after the penalty. So following the holding call, what can they do here on third and long? Now Mayfield. Going deep here for Landry. And that's caught inside the 30. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A full 40 yards that time on third down as the chains move with a lot of room to spare. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. A run for Nick Chubb. He's able to work free for about six down to the 18. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? These two teams all tied after one. The score tied 3-3. On second down and four, Mayfield. Now he's forced out left. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. Offensively, they like their situation, so they tried to take a shot downfield, but no one was open. So it was tuck it in run time, and he picks up a first down. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and 10. This will be caught at about the five. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. From the five, second and four. Mayfield looks to throw, and he's got his tight end. It's Hooper for the Browns' touchdown. A five-yard touchdown catch, and the Browns have taken the lead. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury, and it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. He finds himself open for an easy touchdown. And it is up. The kick is good. And it's good. That'll make our score 10 to 3 now. Fourth, three. on the return. 
And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And I would say they went three and out last time, but actually they didn't even get to three and out. Still a strange decision to us here in the booth. Yeah, let's hope they don't go one and out, but maybe, possibly, let's try and, try and think with them here. Try to play field position maybe, turn the ball over, put it in the hands of their defense. Who knows? You're a nice man. <laughs> They begin the drive with Hines, and not much. Maybe a yard up to the 29. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here, and what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Just got that playoff. Now Rivers. The toss here completed to Pittman. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. 11 yards there, first down. First down, Colts. They run with Hines. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. He's obviously a bit of a shorter running back. Sometimes when he goes up the middle like that, he gets lost in there and then he pops out for 10, 20 yards. I actually asked NFL linebackers if that was true. Do you actually lose sight of some of the smaller running backs? And all of them confirmed that that can be a problem. Think of it this way. Two of the top running backs in NFL history, Emma Smith, Barry Sanders, both 5'10". Take three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. From the 41, Rivers. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. I have to give some credit to the defender on that when he read all of his keys perfectly and got a great break on the ball and able to force that incompletion. The Colts on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and seven. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. That's into the hands of Pascal. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35 yard line. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And Pascal's got it. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Not only is a slant route really difficult to cover, it's a real staple play for an offense on a fourth down because it's a quick hitting play. Get the ball in the hands of the quarterback right to the receiver. And the receiver has to be ready because that thing's coming on a rope. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Normally being a big-bodied receiver, plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Play fake, Rivers. This will be caught inside the 10. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. He's up over 50 yards receiving now in this first half. It's a first down. Seems as if the passing attack starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield, they're understanding the coverages, and they're finding the open holes in the defense. This will be caught at about the 6. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. 
Rivers again. And he's got his man. It's Hilton for the Colts touchdown. To number 13, T.Y. A three-yard touchdown pass. And the Colts are an extra point away from tying up this football game. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch what and the score. Ridiculous. Point after here coming up. And he'll put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. That ties the game at 10. All level now at 10 apiece as the kicks away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. Touchdowns on back-to-back -back drives. So a very good flow right now offensively. Hard to slow them down, too, because they are locked in. Feel like the offense coordinator is a little bit ahead of the defensive guys right now. They're beating them to the punch with their play calls. They've got a nice rhythm they're locked into. How can the defensive guys come up with something that will disrupt that flow? That's what they're seeking right now. Well, it's been an exciting sequence to watch. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive first down. That's pretty much mean potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all challenging that defense. And on that go-around, the offense won the challenge. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Ball at the 40 here for second and five. They run, Chubb. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And this is going to be incomplete. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. On fourth down, here's Jamie Gillen on to punt. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. This is brought in at the 21. 35 yards that time on the punt. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Indy set to go on offense once more. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. They go play action. Rivers. He'll get this one to Pittman. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. This drive starting off on the right foot. 18 yards. And another thing that makes a comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receivers breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. Wait, 
They'll run on first down. Hines pushing forward for three up to the 48. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. At their 48-yard line. Second down at seven. From the gun, Rivers, middle of the field, he finds Pascal. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns 42. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. So a first and 10 upcoming from Browns territory now at the 42-yard line. And he's going to be down at the 35, gain of seven. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Throwing Rivers. He's got Jack Doyle. And he'll go down at the 28. That one, a first down pickup of eight. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. On first down, it's Hines, and he'll be dropped at the 23 after a pickup of about four. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. On play action, Rivers. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Sack leaves Rivers and the Colts with a third and long. To throw, Rivers. The Browns' D locked in on third down. Brings up fourth. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He hit his first. Now this one from 48 yards away. Blankenship's kick is good. And the Colts hit the scoreboard first. It's 3-0. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. Jones returning. And he won't quite make it to the 25. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. First down, Mayfield. He's going to drop this one down for Chubb. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. 
Play fake. Mayfield. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. I feel for some of these guys nowadays because it is so tough to be able to run with these tight ends. Their speed, their elusiveness, especially when they run across the field. Because you're not just running with him. You're trying to run through some traffic as well. To back good plays have them on the move on first down. Mayfield now and finding the tight end Hooper. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Mayfield with it once more. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Well, there's times when you see these catches that are made, and we just know the guys playing it are really wishing for college rules. Only need that one, one foot, foot down eight. instead of two. It's awfully difficult on the sideline, isn't it? 58, come on. 58, come on. Going to the air again with Mayfield. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Here's Jamie Gillen now as he'll kick it away for the second time. That one sails out of bounds. A side judge will walk it off, and he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to like a good golfer can check one up. A good throw here finding Pascal. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead, but a mistake there that can change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. Throwing again on second down. Rivers. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Rivers now. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Olivier Vernon coming in with some force for the sack that time. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. So we've hit halftime, just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. The lake effect snow is set to continue for the second half of action as we are back underway. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. 
I would guess that in the locker room, they talked about cleaning up some of the errors. But overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up. And we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. That throw right side is complete here on the first play of the drive. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Chubb. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. That one is caught by Hunt. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. We often talk about understanding the playbook, understanding progressions, and understanding what the defense is doing. We saw all of that on that play. Great recognition and understood where his running back was going to be. Found a way to have him leak out underneath, hit him with the football, and they picked up the first down. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He was looking to get it to Jarvis Landry that time. And that'll bring up second down. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice. Get rid of it. Live to fight another down. Throwing again. Mayfield on second and ten. Open man is Higgins. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 30. Really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Now, that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against it man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Three yards the gain there, second down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. Looking to throw again on second down. Mayfield has got Hooper on the short connection, and they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Out of the gun, they run it with Hunt. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15, a gain of three. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing a shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. They go with Chubb on second down. He takes us down to about the 12 for a gain of three. Tough day. Tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. From the gun, Mayfield. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Richard Higgins there to make the grab. And once again, the Browns are back in front. And they use that height on the outside to get the score. We've seen the evolution of the wide receivers. They've gotten taller and taller, but they've retained their quickness and their speed. It's a lethal combination. Always good to have wide receivers with height. You always worry about the plant foot in the snow, but no problems there. And that will make this a four-point game.
after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. Rodgers on the return. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. We'll see what they have up their sleeve. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves them with a second and three. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But a guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. Rivers. He'll find Hines out of the backfield. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 11 yards there, first down. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. First down, Rivers. That's into the hands of Pascal. Rivers. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him. Why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. On second down, it's Hines. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Four yards the pickup, first down. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. They'll wind up getting four down to the 36. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? And right side, they're going to go option here. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. A loss on that play. And now third down gets tougher. Third and six. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner. Because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. And he'll find Pittman. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Rivers on first down. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. The D tackle, Sheldon Richardson, came barreling in for the sack. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. I wonder what was going through his mind when he got the play call. He just got sacked on the previous play. He knows they're coming after him again. A little bit of guts to stand in there, take the hit, and successfully complete the screen pass. Really well done. On third down, Rivers. He'll check this down to Hines. And he does not get to the first down marker. As they stop him at the 19, it'll be a gain of eight yards. And that's going to bring up the fourth down. A short gain that doesn't get him the first down, 
brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. Try to punch it in with Taylor. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. Fourth and two in the NFL, not ordinarily a running down anymore. Usually that ball is moved through the air. They went ahead and gave it to the back, and he ends up picking up the first down. I'm not sure if they fooled them as much as they just did a nice job executing. Needed two, and they got three. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A 16-yard touchdown. And the Colts are once again going to retake the lead. As a general rule, quarterbacks don't want to lock in on a receiver before the ball is snapped. But in this case, based on the matchup he thought he was going to get, it was favorable for his tight end. He locked in on him early and found him for a touchdown. And his kick is right through. Colts 20, Browns 17. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. Peoples-Jones returning. And able to get this out to the 25. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. They had seized the lead there for a little bit with a starting drive in the third quarter, but a moment ago, the touchdown that puts them back behind. So their defense is under siege a little bit right now because they have not able to solve their opponents. So they've got to keep hammering away on offense and try and win this one in what appears to be a shootout. They'll start with Hunt on the ground, and he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver, but he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front, so if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. On second and seven. Mayfield, Kadero Hodge has it complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 19 yards to pick up there, move the chains. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was gonna open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake in the line of scrimmage, got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride and he was able to run free after the catch. On the ground, it's Chubb. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. He was brought down at his 49-yard line. Two yards on the pickup. It's second and eight. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Eight yards to go on second down. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. He'll get this one underneath to Hunt. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. A first down throw for Mayfield. 
He'll get this into the hands of Hodge. That catch good for only a couple. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. And now Mayfield on the bootleg. Flush to his right. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. The Browns on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. Here it's third and three. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. First and 10, Mayfield, and that's going to be incomplete. Austin Hooper, the intended receiver, but it'll be second down. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. Uh, who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. A second down throw for Mayfield. This pass complete to Higgins. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Third and short yardage, Mayfield. This one complete into the hands of Higgins. Yeah, the Browns are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. So they hit pay dirt, but don't count it yet. There's laundry on the field. We'll see what the penalty flag is about. Late game, that hurts. Take the touchdown off the board. No doubt about it. And this is where you make a great movie scene, right? Go in, rally the team. Okay, we lost points there. Let's get it back and go out and score again. Can he get it done? So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Austin Hooper, the tight end, was the intended target. But now it's third and goal. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. This Colts D up to the challenge so far, but they need another stop here on third and goal. And again, it's Mayfield. This will be caught at about the five. And he is out of bounds here. They're able to hold him to three there, and that leads to a fourth and goal. He got out of bounds. That's a good thing, but still short of the first. And now, since this brings up fourth down, the defensive play caller, grab your nerves, because now you don't want to be so amped up that you give them a first down by getting out of your lanes, but you also don't want to just lay back and let them have it easily. And Parkey's kick is good. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. Well, you talk about clutch. That one was right down Broadway, and this game's all even here in the fourth. Yeah, he didn't leave any doubt, did he? Good snap, good hold, dead center. Almost like a big-time golfer in a major, firing at a pin from the fairway, trying to win the tournament going down the stretch.
Cody fitting for what's been a tight ball game. We're all even at 20 now as the kick's away. Rodgers on the return. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Colts set to take over here offensively. And we essentially have a brand new ball game. After that last field goal has tied us all up, we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter. I'll tell you, far from ideal conditions to play in, but neither offense has had much trouble. Plenty of points to go around. First and ten. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by the former first-round pick, Kevin Johnson. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. Intercepted. The Browns take over first and 10. And following the interception, Mayfield. And finding the tight end, Hooper. A gain of six there on first. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people round the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. To throw, Mayfield. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Mayfield now. He's got a man wide open. It's Landry. And he will reach the five-yard line before going out of bounds. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. A field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. They'll run with Chubb. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. Well, Grant, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise, this close to the goal line. Because ordinarily, you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. From the two now, second and goal. They'll give it to Chubb, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Browns have moved out in front. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know that sounds really generic, and it sounds almost trite. But the blocks were made up front. Offensive line, collective victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield. And how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone? Parkey with the extra point. And they will take a seven-point lead. on the return. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. And able to break this out all the way to the 38-yard line. Great return. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn to an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. 
So a challenge is upon us. I tell you, close game, fourth quarter. This is a huge decision. Oh, no doubt about that, partner. A lot has to be riding on this call. And you know it is a tight one because it has to be indisputable visual evidence in order to change it. Now here's the big question. Do they actually have that evidence? We're about to find out. First down throw here for Rivers. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for his running back, Naheem Hines, but it's going to be second down. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, we're not talking about our on air commentary here. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual I know. for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. A place like that, Charles, no doubt, they're just going to continue to fuel this crowd. And this defense is already playing well, but it also feeds on the energy of that crowd that you're talking about, and that takes them up to another level. Right now, they're playing really loose. They've got the lead, and what a nice stop they just made there behind the line of scrimmage. A good throw here, finding Pascal. They get seven there, but it brings up four. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. As Sanchez on to punt here as he sends this one away. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the, at the 15 yard line. Not too bad. Now, the Browns' offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 15. He'll start things off with a handoff to Chubb. Brought down around the 16 or 17. Showed some tough running, but couldn't free much space. And Kari Willis there to bring him down. A tight game like this. Such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line. they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back. Tell him to take care of the ball and try to move forward. Now, what a first down pickup of eight. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. They go play action, Mayfield. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Landry again, the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. Oh, that's got to frustrate him a little bit because they nearly got to him there, and it would have been the first sack of the game. Instead, they're able to influence the release, and they did force the incomplete pass. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. From the gun, Mayfield. That's into the hands of Donovan Peoples-Jones. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one good for 26 and a first down. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. On first down, they'll run with Hunt. And they'll get this just to the 47. One yard gain. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. 
They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And they'll get this just to the 47. One yard gain. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Now, the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession. So they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. On third down, Mayfield. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Rashard Higgins. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Browns add on to their lead. And man, Charles, talk about singing something in there. Those gloves, they help with one-handed catches, the fun stuff. Any padding for a rocket like that? One would think so, but I'll guarantee you this, after that throw, his hands will hurt later. Not right now in the moment. He's just feeling good about catching it. Yeah, a little stinger, but a touchdown. Well, Harkey adds the extra point, and the lead now up to 14. on the return and they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30 so now the veteran rivers and the colts down by two touchdowns 212 to play they have all three timeouts and the two-minute warning but they need two scores First and 10, Rivers. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. Complete to Naheem Hines. A gain of nine brings up second and one at the 37-yard line. Here's second and a yard. From the gun, Rivers. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. He was looking for Jack Doyle that time. And it's third and short. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice. Or maybe even routes versus air. Because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. On third and one, here's Rivers. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And unable to connect, incomplete. Uh, give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. We've seen that the deep ball's been a part of their game plan all afternoon, but they've had trouble hooking up on it. Unable to successfully find the end zone over the top. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Desperation time, Rivers on fourth down. And it's incomplete, they cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Browns are gonna get this thing back. Excellent field position. First and 10, and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball, three tight ends are out there. Now Chubb. And he gets it down to the 32. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. And a few kneel downs should come very close to finishing this one off, depending on whether or not we see any defensive timeouts. They still have two, but using them would just be prolonging what's really already been decided. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. And again, it's Chubb. 
And this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. Now Mayfield lost the football. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Jamie Gillen now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. The Colts getting another possession here on offense. And this offense last time turned it over, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series, and because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was say, maybe makes that offense feel good but when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that'll loosen up things a little bit, won't it? Maybe you'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. The 24-yard line. Rivers has been through this many times as he'll hustle his guys to the line. To throw again on second down. Rivers. That's complete to Hines out of the backfield. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll bring up a third down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Take it in by the tight end, Doyle. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. Working the sideline there. Good route, good catch. First down, and he gets out of bounds. Yeah, you have to like the play calling because you have to run some guys down the middle of the field to draw some of the defenders away. They can't just let them guard the sideline exclusively. That's how it's going to work. Sidelines and incompletions to use the clock. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Miles Garrett in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness that defensive line is eating them alive. The pass underneath. Here's Hines with it. Today's final score. Brown Charles, we saw a lot of points go up in this one. Certainly defensively, stuff that they can look at on film, don't you think? No doubt about it. And they've got to go back and check where the errors are, how they're going to fix them, and continue to get better at what they do. But they also need a little adjustment with their confidence. To give up that many points, even if you win a game, that can hurt you. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound as we say so long from Cleveland.